Well, good evening, everybody. Please open your Bibles to John 8. It'll be the first passage we turn to, but the text is in your outline at the top. I bless the Lord. Thank the Lord for the message. He certainly blessed me in preparing it. I pray he bless you with it here tonight. In the name of Christ, I really love the fact that the Lord has so many names for Christ that the Father predestined all these different magnificent names to understand more deeply who Christ is and how eternal he is. If you think about the names, I, every now and then I bicycle out in the country and I stop at the cemetery and wait for Kim to pick me up at the cemetery and I look at the tombstones and read the names and I can't remember them right now, even the names I read a couple weeks ago when I was out there and nobody knows who they are anymore. They're dead and gone, I, and we will be too. There's no lasting thing in this world that's worth focusing on except one name, the Lord Jesus Christ, and all the magnificent names God the Father gave us to understand more deeply and more broadly who Christ is. <clears throat> the text is in Philippians 2, 8 and 9, and being found in fashion as a man, this is why Christ is so magnificent. He's God Almighty, but he's found in fashion as a man. God incarnate in human flesh. Humbled himself, became obedient unto death. God Almighty in human flesh agreed with his Father to die for sinners, for enemies, those that fell in Adam. Even the death of the cross, now in Deuteronomy, the death of the cross is accursed. All those that die on that cross, on that tree, God says they're accursed. Those are the ones that go to hell. Christ agreed to go to hell in our place, that he would pay our penalty of eternal damnation with his righteous holy blood, that he'd free us with his blood not spilt, shed particularly for a particular people, every drop on each one of us. His blood has been applied to every one that God the Father put in that great book of life that he wrote before the foundation of the world. He elected us and wrote us in the book and we're safe and secure under the blood of Christ. This Christ, <clears throat> wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name. All the other names are all going to fade away and be forgotten. But Christ's name, <laughs> eternal Righteous, holy, sovereign God. What a name. What a name. I'm in the L's on the names. It's going to be a couple more months before I get to the Z. But uh, the light of the world, the light of the tribe of Judah, the Lord of all, the Lord of glory, and the Lord of our righteousness are the, the names of Christ I want to preach tonight. Turn to John 8 if you're not there already. I need to get there. John 8 is the first point. The light of the world is the first point this evening. John 8 is where Christ uh, forgives sin. There's a woman found in adultery, and Christ forgives her. John 8, verse 1 reads, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Wouldn't that be awesome just to sit at his feet and listen to him teach in the temple on this earth? That's amazing. Scribes and Pharisees, those that, that hate Christ, brought unto him a woman, taken him in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. <clears throat> then now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting Christ that they might have a, something to accuse him by. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger rode in the ground, just started writing down the, in the dirt as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone. Woman standing in the midst. Imagine me and that woman just standing there. All their accusers are gone now. Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? 
And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus turned to those that were there that he was teaching, and he said unto them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have life, the light of life. Christ proclaims he is the very light of salvation. The light that he gives, that God the Father has ordained for this woman here in the story, who is an elect woman, caught in adultery, there's no question about it, and Christ said, you're free, your sins are forgiven, Go, you're safe, you're secure. This Jesus has the ability to save sinners, to forgive sinners, to let us go free when we're caught red-handed. <clears throat> he is sovereign, holy God that's able to save sinners from their sin. He's also called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Turn to Revelation chapter 5, please. Revelations chapter 5. This is uh, the Apostle John in prison writing in story form and a couched way the gospel so that the people that were proofreading his letters would let the letters get out. And of course it's the gospel condensed. Revelations chapter 5. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne of the book written within on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who's worthy to open the book and to loose the, seven, the seals thereof? No man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to loose thereon, to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the, and read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, or look to the lion of the tribe of Judah, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, He's the very root of David. He created David, and he was born from David. He, he hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Are you sure? Right he did. He took that book that has the names of every one of the elect right out of the hand of God the Father because he shed his blood for us. Because he's the lamb that was shed, that shed his blood before the foundation of the world that he agreed to die for a particular people that are in that book. And he, he makes sure we're safe and secure based on his work for us. This lion of the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah is in the book. That's why it's such an important book. The very tribe of the house of God Almighty, the church, the bride, the elect, the chosen, the people that, that Christ shed his blood for in that book. And he's our leader. He's our lion. He's the head of us all. <clears throat> and he's the Lord of all. The third point. Turn to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 is where Peter found that people were gathered together for him to preach. So he opened his mouth in verse 40 and 34 of Acts 10 and started preaching to him. Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is, is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are, how intelligent you are, how ignorant you are, or how poor you are. It has nothing to do with God's free grace and will toward you. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now, Peter says something pretty important there. The fear of God and to work righteousness. What's, what is it to work righteousness? The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. There it is. When a person comes to the logical agreement with God Almighty's word, that Christ alone is the Lord of all. This is righteousness which sinners work out of their mouths before God Almighty. It's the new heart that God gives us. This is It's an amazing miracle that God gives His people to literally say, He is Lord of all. There's no other power. There's no other force out there. There's no trickster. 
is trying to do things a different way. God is Lord, Christ is Lord of all. Verse 37, that word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. All that find out that were oppressed with the devil, we end up saying, Lord of all. Christ is Lord of all. When we were possessed of the devil, we thought we were Lord of all. We thought we were something pretty praiseworthy before God, that he better accept us, that he better accept our person. He doesn't respect us. He only respects and loves and adores the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood. And whom he shed his blood for were made whole based on his blood, not our personality. Verse 39, And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him, that's Christ, God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto the witnesses chosen before of God. Those in the book of God Almighty are revealed who Christ is. You know what they say? He's Lord of all. He's righteous. There's no other good one in all creation. In all the generations of man, we're all trash. Christ is righteous. He's good. This brings us to the fourth Lord of glory. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See the name of Christ as the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, please. This is the Apostle Paul saying, even though I'm probably the smartest man that became a Jew, or was born a Jew, and probably the smartest man in all that system, I'm not going to preach with fancy words. I'm not going to do it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's all that matters. Christ and Him crucified. The blood of Christ is when God saves. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power. I just told you what it is. The demonstration of the spirit and the power that God gives His people is to say, you're Lord of all. I used to think I was. Now I know your Lord of all. And I'm a nothing that'll die and perish in my sin unless the Lord of all save me from my sin. That your faith, verse 5, should not stain, stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that came to naught. But we speak wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world under our, under our glory. You know, he, he put our name in that book, and it's only revealed during your lifetime, one by one, person by person, each elect, it's revealed. I'm a sinner, and he's my Savior. What a glory. What a glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. He didn't reveal himself to the princes of this world. For if he would have revealed it to them, they wouldn't have even crucified the Lord Christ. Because they would have said, this is the Lord of glory in front of us. He's the Lord of all. <clears throat> and those that he gives to see this, the last point is he co we call him the Lord our righteousness. Jeremiah 23, please. I think this is the last of the L's in my list of the names of Christ. The Lord is a good one. The Lord our righteousness. Jeremiah 23, verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. That's his son, born of David. A king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. That's the Lord Christ. 
In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall be shall dwell safely. They they parted ways for a while, didn't they? They were two separate kingdoms. God says those that are elect are all going to be safe. The church is going to be safe, and this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. The very church of God, the very saints of God, those that are in the, written in the book, are going to consider ourselves nothing and we're just going to brag on Christ as our righteousness the Lord our righteousness therefore behold the days come saith the Lord that they shall no more say the Lord liveth which brought up the children out of Israel out of the land of Egypt we're not going to be focused on being saved from slavery in this life what are we going to say verse 8 but but the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel those were, that were written in the book of life out of the north country and from the countries where whither I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land he saves his people he sends a preacher to where his people are in the latter days and that's where we're at now he sends a preacher right to where you're at and he sits you down under that preaching ministry and he teaches you and preaches Christ's righteousness and the day that's appointed you don't know when the spirit came in but you know now you're convinced. This is amazing. I used to think I was something special. Now I think I'm trash. And the Lord is my righteousness. He's the one that's the Lord of glory, the Lord of all. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah, and he's the light of the world. The use of the message tonight is, is in 2 Corinthians. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, please. <laughs> May it be the Lord light inside those that are dark here tonight. That they'd see who they are, vile and wicked sinners. They'd see Christ as their righteousness, the only righteous one. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. When God dwells within you, you know, you know it. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. This, this is what the legacy of the saints is. We say he's our father, we're his daughters, we're his sons, and it's nothing that we did to deserve it. He gave us this mind. He's dwelling within us, and he's speaking, the Lord is my righteousness. That's where you rest, in Christ alone. Rick, close us in prayer, please.